Welcome back everybody. This is our video solution to problem 3 from Quiz 9, Fall 2023, Math 307, Linear Algebra at Cal State Fullerton. In this problem, we are going to get to use the Gram-Schmidt method, actually we'll use the modified Gram-Schmidt method, on a list of vectors in C3. So this is the three-dimensional uh, complex numbers here. And we want to uh, start with this list of vectors and produce an orthonormal list with the same span. Actually, this is a basis for C3. So uh, we just have a reminder here uh, that the inner product is just the usual Euclidean inner product on C3. So if I have vectors uh, W and Z given as I did here with column vectors, we can compute the inner product by taking the sum of, well, we take all of these products here. It's like a dot product, but remember, we take the complex conjugate of the second component. All right, so let's get into it. Now, remember with the modified Gram-Schmidt method, we are going to do the ortho part first. All right, so that'll be number one, and then we'll do the normalization at the end. So we won't have to do any normalizing as we go. All right, so we're gonna want these vectors floating around, so I moved them down here for us so we could see them. and. Uh, just for fun, uh, it, I'm going to give some names to these. I'll call these V1, uh, this one V2, and this one V3. And uh, just for convenience of writing things on the screen, I'm going to write these column vectors as row vectors. It really doesn't change uh, any of the math here. So first, let's note, when we do the Gram-Schmidt method, uh, we're going to have a W1, right? Because we're going to convert the Vs into Ws. All right, and these Ws are going to be an orthogonal basis. Um, and the first one is very easy. This W1 is actually going to equal the V1, right? So W1 is just going to be I comma zero comma zero. All right, and I'm gonna make a little list. I know at the end I'm gonna want a W2 and I'm gonna want a W3. And of course I already have a, a V2, which is equal to uh, 1 plus i, 1 and i, and I also have a v3, which is equal to 0, 2 comma i. All right, so I have this nice chart, and I know from doing the Gram-Schmidt method that I'm going to have to be comparing uh, w2 with, uh, or v2 rather, with w1, v3 with w1, v3 with w2 as part of this uh, Gram-Schmidt method. All right, and when I say compare, I mean applying the inner product. But I'm never going to have to do V2 with W2 or V3 with W3, right? Anytime they, they match, I can mark those off. I can connect these with a little line. I, know I don't need anything on that line or above. So I really just need right, this one, this two, and this third inner product. All right, now I can't do anything with W2 yet because I don't know what W2 is. But I can compute the inner products of V2 with W1 and V3 with W1. Since I'm going to need all that, I'm just going to do it immediately. Okay, so let's see. If I want to take the inner product of V2 with W1, I'm going to do 1 plus I times I bar, right? So this is, we'll do this one time very carefully over here, right? So if I'm doing V2 with W1, this is going to be 1 plus I times the complex conjugate of I. And then 1 times the complex conjugate of 0. And then I times the complex conjugate of 0. Okay, complex conjugate of 0 is just 0. So I don't need to worry about that. The only thing I get is this piece here. So uh, let's start with the I times I bar. Oh, I bar is negative I. And I times negative I is just 1. And then I have 1 times negative I. So I'll just get 1 minus I. All right, so there's my inner product. All right. Okay, so next uh, I'm going to do V3 with W1. And here it's really nice. I have 0 times I bar, 2 times 0 bar, I times 0 bar. It just adds up to 0. Cool. All right, so let's jump into it. I want to try to compute W2. And our Gram-Schmidt formula tells us that I need to take V2. And then I'm going to subtract the inner product of v2 and w1 divided by the square of the norm of w1. Oh, I'm going to need all those uh, squares of norms of things, so let me write these on the side. 
So I'm going to be computing these as I go. And let's see, well, W1 is just I00, and the way we get the square of the norm is actually just uh, taking the square of the absolute value or the complex norm of these. I has length one, the square is one, and then you have zero squared plus zero squared. Okay, so the square of the norm of W1 is just one. Okay, and then over here, we also have to multiply by W1, and let's expand it out. So let's see, W2 is one plus I comma one comma I minus, all right, well, we have this nice table. The inner product of V2 with W1 is one minus I divided by the square of the norm of W1, which is, well, it's just one, times W1, which was I comma zero comma zero. Okay, so let's see. We have one plus I, one and I, and now what are we subtracting? Well, this is one minus I over one, which is just one minus I, times I zero, zero. So let's see, one minus I times I is going to be, let's see, negative I times I is one, and then one times I is I, so one plus I, and then, well, the rest of them are zeros. Okay, and now we subtract, and, oh, this is beautiful, one plus I minus one plus I is zero, and then one minus zero is one, and I minus zero is I. So there we go, our W2 is going to be zero, one, and I. All right, might as well compute the square of the norm. Uh, let's see, one is one away, I is one away, so one squared plus one squared is two. Okay, so now we can actually compute this last inner product we need, which is gonna be V3 with W2. We have zero times zero bar is zero, two times one bar, that's just two, and then I times I bar is one. So two plus one is three. All right, so here we go. Now we're gonna to try to compute W3. This will be V3 minus the inner product of V3 and W1 over the square of the length of W1 times W1 minus the inner product of V3 and W2 over the square of the length of W2 times W2. All right, let's see. So V3 is zero two I minus, all right, now the inner product of V3 and W1, that's just zero, so I don't even get this middle term, right? That's, that's wonderful, that's just gonna be zero. Okay, and then V3 with W2 has inner product three. So I have three over, and then the square of the norm of W2 is two times W2, which we just established is zero, one, I. All right, so we have zero, two, I minus, okay, three halves times zero is zero, and then we get three halves and three halves, I. Okay, so subtracting, we have zero, uh, two minus three halves is one half, and I minus three halves, I is negative one half, I. And there we go, we found our W3. 0, 1 half, negative 1 half i. All right. Now, at this point, I'd be wanting to compute the square of the norm, but I don't like that. Here's the thing, right? We have found our orthogonal basis, okay? So this basis right here, W1, W2, W3 is orthogonal, okay? So W1, W2, W3 is an O basis. Okay, the full Gram-Schmidt though, we wanna normalize this thing. And this W3, I don't wanna normalize it because it looks scary, right? It's got these halves in it. I don't wanna be squaring those around. Okay, I could, but I wanna show you kind of an alternative thing that I like to do to make my life a little easier. So I'm gonna make a W3 prime because here's the thing, right? We're normalizing anyway. When you normalize, all you do is multiply by a constant. I'm just gonna multiply by two. So my W3 prime will be twice W3, which will be zero, one, negative I. Okay, so I'm gonna replace W3 with W3 prime. And I'll put that up here. All right, and W3 prime, that's much easier to compute the square of the norm. This would be one plus one is two. Okay, so finally we can now produce our orthonormal basis. So we call those E's. And E1 will be one over the length of W1 times W1. 
ah, but the length of W1 is just 1. So this is actually just equal to W1, right? Which was I comma 0 comma 0. All right, how about E2? That'll be 1 over the length of W2 times W2. All right, well, the length of W2 is going to be the square root of 2. So 1 over the square root of 2 times, okay, our W2 uh, we have up here 0, 1, I. And so multiplying, we get 0, 1 over root 2, and 1 over root 2, I. All right, so finally, we are going to get our W3, or rather our E3. So this is going to be 1 over the length of W3 prime times W3 prime. All right, we said the length here was, uh, well, the square is 2, so the length is, again, going to be the square root of 2. So 1 over the square root of 2 times 0, 1, negative i. And this gives us 0, 1 over root 2, negative 1 over root 2 i. All right. Uh, one thing, of course, we should always do, right? Like we, we hope, we believe, right, that this is an orthonormal basis. And of course, if we've done all the steps correctly, it is, but it's easy to get these things wrong, right? Like we did a lot of little arithmetic steps. It's very easy to get something wrong, but you might go through here and first, well, make sure you still have an orthogonal basis, right? Take the inner product of any two of these. Now, the nice thing is with the E1, it has only a non-zero entry in the first component. So the other ones, yeah, they're, they're definitely it's going to be orthogonal to those. And these two, well, look, you do 1 over root 2 times 1 over root 2, and then 1 over root 2i times negative 1 over root 2i. Yeah, of course, those are going to cancel with each other. So it's definitely orthogonal. And, of course, it's easy to check, right? We can, we can compute the norms of these things to make sure they're norm 1. Okay, but I'll let you uh, make sure that I've done this correctly. So there we go. We have found an orthonormal basis starting from just a regular old random basis that we write down. All right, hope this is helpful. We will see you next time.